Whether you've got several computers and you need somewhere to keep them all, or you just want to tidy up an area for a few IT devices, you'll probably consider buying a server rack. Now, although my existing server rack does have spare capacity, I'm not overly keen on adding any extra weight to it just because of where it is. It was only meant to be there temporarily, but as anyone in IT knows, things that are meant to be temporary end up becoming permanent. Now, moving this many servers is going to be very disruptive, and if something does go wrong, well, so for that reason, I bought another rack. It's actually the same rack that I've already got, but this is the 25U version, and that's because I now have a bigger NAS and I do need more room for it. Now I could have saved myself some money and bought a used server rack from eBay for instance, but the reason that I bought another StarTech rack is not only is the price reasonable, but you can adjust the depth from 22 to 40 inches. This gives you a lot of flexibility, not just for the servers that you want to put in the rack, but also for shelving. So how easy is this rack to assemble? Well, if that's something that you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video, because that's what we'll be going over. Now there isn't actually that much in this box, but it is all well packaged together. The parts for the frame itself are all well protected in bubble wrap, and everything else is in another cardboard box. Open that box, and not only do you get the bolts and washers needed to assemble the rack, they also give you the tools. There are also casters and feet for the rack included, as well as cable management. And while most of the parts are intuitive to understand, the pillars also have an L or an R on them to make identification easier. The main appeal about this rack is that you can adjust the depth, and that's all detailed in the installation manual. There are four side beams to assemble, and you set the rack depth by aligning their inner slots using the index numbering shown in this guide. In this case, I've opted for a depth of 32 inches, and that means the left and right beams would both need to be set to five. So that's what I did. One of the bags you get contains all the bolts and washers you need for assembling the rack. And you also get a spanner to tighten these up. So what you'll want is all four of these beams looking like this, with all of the bolts tightened. Now, it is going to be a lot easier to do this if you've got somebody to help you, but in any case, this is how I did it. You might want to put some protective covering down on the floor if things could get scratched, but in any case, select a left pillar and place it down to your left. The numbering should face left and ascend from the bottom upward. Now place a side beam with the numbering upright but facing the ground at the top of the pillar. Bolt in the lowest hole of the pillar this top beam. But don't tighten this up too much because we want to leave a gap. Select the top section with the StarTech logo nearest to you and facing left and you can pick either of the two parts, they are identical. And slide this in between the top hole and the top beam. Now bolt these three parts together, tighten both bolts and we now have a front top left corner assembled. If it helps, one thing I found useful was to lift a corner up in one hand while starting bolts in with the other, as things got much better aligned if they were in my hand than if they were left lying on the floor. The next thing to do is to assemble the front bottom left corner. To do that, place a side beam with the numbering upright but facing the ground at the bottom of the pillar. Select a lower section, they're both identical so it doesn't matter which one you pick. Slide that in between both parts with the widest section facing outwards. Now bolt these together, then tighten the bolts. And now we have the front bottom left corner assembled. Assembling the rear top right corner is going to be just the same as what we did for the front top left corner. Except this time we need to pick a right pillar. This time Make sure the top section that you put in place has the logo in this corner. With the numbering on the pillar facing to the right this time, but again in ascending order from bottom upwards, you should bolt the lowest hole of the pillar to the top beam, but don't tighten it too much. Then attach and bolt in the top section. It's then a matter of tightening up the bolts, and we now have our rear 
top right corner assembled. The next section to do is the rear bottom right corner. So we'll select the remaining lower section, except this time we want the widest section facing to the right. Bolt all three parts together, tighten those bolts, and now we've got our rear bottom right corner assembled. Select the right pillar, and with the numbering facing to the left and ascending upwards, rest this on the top left section of the rack, and then place the other end on the bottom section. Select the side beam, and with the numbering facing toward you and upright, align it with the top section. Whilst holding the parts in place, add the bolts and tighten them. Now we have our front top right corner assembled. The next section that we'll be working on is the front bottom right. Select the remaining side beam and with the numbering facing upward and toward you, align it with the lower corner on your left. Whilst holding the parts in place, add the bolts and tighten them. Now we have our front bottom right corner assembled. Now select the remaining left pillar and with the numbering facing to the right and ascending upwards, rest this on the top right section. Then rest the other end of the pillar on the bottom section. Lift the side beam into place and whilst holding everything together, add the bolts and then tighten them. Now we have a rear top left corner assembled. And now all that needs to be done for the final corner is to align the parts, add in the bolts and tighten them. Now the rack is supplied with casters and levelling feet, but this is optional. And because I don't have a need to actually get underneath the actual rack to be able to fit cabling, for instance, I didn't actually do this. However, these are actually supplied with the rack and the manual does show you what you need to do. Now the last thing to do is to make sure that all of those bolts have been tightened and then you can lift the rack up and move it into place. And now you have a rack that you can populate with computers as well as other IT equipment. Now I've worked on a lot of server racks over the decades using cage nuts and I don't think there was ever a time when I didn't actually get my hands cut. Since then I've discovered rack studs and I've been using these instead. You can get them in different sizes but these purple ones are the type to use in a rack like this. Now, in this case, I've used them for a shelf, but I also use them in my other rack for 1U and 2U servers, so I do recommend them. Now, if you find this video to be useful, then do consider subscribing to the channel, as that would really mean a lot to me. But it's also a good indicator to let me know how videos like this are helpful to people such as yourself that are watching. In which case, thank you. On the other hand, if you're not ready for that level of commitment, then I'd really appreciate it if you could press the like button, because that way that will help to get the video out to other people that might find it useful as well.